Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I greet you, you are welcome to today's episode. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Mr. Daniel. Good afternoon, Sister Queen. Good afternoon, Mr. Kelly. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Too fun, I greet you. So I greet every, everyone out there. We are here to answer que some questions together. Uh, so <clears throat> last Saturday, we shifted a meeting to evening due to my, you know, my own schedule. And also though some people, I tried to notify everybody, but Unfortunately, I couldn't reach everybody. So uh, pardon me for that. But today we are here to answer questions together. My name is Frank. If you are meeting me for the first time, welcome to Driving School Tutorial. Good afternoon, Sister Tracy. Good afternoon, Wizzy B. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. So. Uh, in order to waste time, we are quickly going to look into the first question of today, which is what we are having here. <clears throat> Please, if you can't hear me, just try to indicate. But if you can hear me, let me know you can hear me so that I, we can proceed. Mr. Friday, good afternoon. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> good afternoon, Mr. Exodus. So please, if you can hear me, just try to let me know that you can hear me. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Victor. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Please just help me with that. Okay, Sister Tracy, I can hear you very good. Thank you for that. So now we can proceed. Okay, yes, we have this question before us, which says, Good afternoon, Mr. Mose, Mose Grande. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Yes, okay, I can hear you. Okay, thank you for that. So uh, we have this question before us, which says, Is señora figurato indica la lunghezza di un tratto di strada con curve pericolosa in successione? So what is our response? Uh, Il signore figurato indica la lunghezza di un tratto di strada con curva pericoloso in successione. Okay, good afternoon again, once again, good afternoon. Okay, I have a parcel from Mr. Friday, I have a Paso from Mr. Victor, I have a Vero from um, Sachi Gose, I have Vero from uh, Sister Fede, I have Vero from Mr. Gaspawa and Lady, Lady JP said Vero and also Wizibi said Faso. Okay. The reason why I'm, you know, I really want to focus on this question today is because. I've tried several times to answer this question, uh, but I still discovered that so many people, they still are, uh, you know, made mistakes, you know, with questions that has to do with this sign. Though uh, I think these are mostly majority of the people that couldn't watch the video or that have not watched the video that I made this particular sign. Though the, the video was done in pidgin English, on, and also I think the, the, the other time I also tried to do something regarding to that. But today we are going to try to do something different so that so many of us can really have a deep understanding of what this sign is talking about. For example, before we, we proceed to look into uh, you know, the sign itself, we are going to look into these two signs because this is where the confusion is. If you look this to if you look at these two signs, you see we have let's call this sign A and let's call it sign B. If you look at the sign A, you see we are having 320 meters. So this one is 320 meters. Why why the um sign B is 
380 meters. But if you look at sign B, where the problem is, is that sign B is having two arrows that is pointing from the from a ground to up or from down to up, sorry. The two arrows that are pointing from down to up. Now, what are all these things telling us? We are going to, at first, try to dismantle this sign before we proceed to, you know, see what the, the answer, uh, what the answer is uh, regarding the question we are having. For example, in order to do that, I would like us to, you know, break this sign into this number of pieces. For example, you see we are having, this is the 380, this is a sign on its own. 320 meters is also a sign on its own. This, uh, this double curve, uh, the first at the right, is uh, taking under the topic essentially the pericolo, which says that in 150 meters time, you are having a, a dangerous curve where, where you have a dangerous series of curves where you have uh, the first curve uh, to your right, you understand? So this is a uh, signal de pericolo, which, uh, you know, uh, uh, which uh, it warns you about, uh, you know, series of curve. In that case, you need to proceed with uh, prudence, moderate your velocity, and also in a double way road, you, you make sure you stay close to the right part of the, car of the carriageway. Now, to pr proceed, I want us to look into this first one, this 320 meters. Now, when they, are, when they give you this 320 meters, what are they telling you? They are simply telling you the distance you, between you and the, let's use this um, um, uh, bus, or let's call it vehicle A and vehicle B. So this 320 meters, is telling you the distance that vehicle A is having from vehicle B, which means for vehicle A to get to the, um, the, the position where vehicle B is, vehicle A have to you know, um, travel a 320 meter distance. So is the length of the distance where vehicle B is located from vehicle A. So take note, the, the one that is having only meters that is not having the arrow talks about the distance. Now, having said that, let's proceed to this next one. If you are having this one, this 380 meters with these two arrows pointing from down to up. What is it? What are they referring to? This one is referring to that you know um, bus that you are having, uh, you know, at your front. The length of the bus, because remember, we we we, we you know uh, there was this number that tell us that tells, tells us the distance we are keeping from that bus or the distance that we, we need to cover to get to where that bus is. But we also want to know how, how long or um, the length of this bus. Now, in order to tell you the length of this bus, they have to give you this one to make you understand that the length of this bus is 380 meters. Now, let us move to where the, the, the real sign, you know, is um, what the sign is talking about. For example, now, we have this uh, vehicle, the, this yellow vehicle, with this sign, which shows that in 150 meters time, you have a um, series of, of curve. But because of how dangerous this curve is, the owner of the road don't want to give you this sign in 150 meters time. He want to give it to you before in order to make you, you know, be aware on time that there is a dangerous call, very, you know, dangerous series of call 
you know, in some certain distance. So in order to do that, it will have to give you this 320 meters to let you know that, know that instead of 150 meters is 300, is notifying you 320 meters before to let you understand that this position, position where you are, from this place to 320 meters time, you are going to approach a series of core. You understand? So now, but you still don't understand how long is this curve or the, the length of the stretch of road where this curve is located. In that case, the owner of the road will have to give you this one with these two arrows to let you understand that from, the, from A to Z of that curve is 380 meters. So that is why we are having this one pointing the arrow from uh, down to up to let you understand that the, 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 the stretch of road where this curve is, is 380 meters. You understand? Please, if you, if you have any question, please do not hesitate. Make sure you ask your question. Uh, you can type it under uh, you know, so that uh, at the end of the day, I will try my best to make sure I give response to that. So, for example, we're having this sign here now. This sign now is not, they are not indicating the distance where I have uh, this, uh, this um, dangerous curve from. They are not indicating it because we all know that is Senale di Pericolo, it is placed 150 meters before the uh, where the danger is. So automatically I understand that giving me this time, this sign, I now know that in 150 meters time, I will meet a dangerous curve where the first curve is to the right. But how long is this curve? That is when the now indicate get this one to let me know that the curve, the length of where that, the stretch of road, where that curve is, is 1.5 kilometers. Remember 1.5 kilometers, if you are converting, converting it to meters, that is going to give you 1,500 meters, if I'm correct. So the length of that, the stretch of road where the, the dangerous curve is, is 1,500 meters, which is 1.5 kilometers. You understand? Now, returning to our question, which says, in segnale raffigurato, indica la lunghezza di un tratto stradale con curve pericoloso in successione. A verissimo. It is true because you see the curve, curve successione, what are they talking about? You see, we have one curve here. Let me pick my, okay. We have one curve here. Successively, we have another one, you know, just like that. So you have it in continuation, one after the other. So that is why it is called series of curve, you understand? So the answer, please take note, is very. If you still have anything you don't understand regarding this question, please, you can, you know, you can indicate that uh, the comment section and so that uh, I will also try to see if there is any way I can explain it different, but this is, I think this is just all you, you need to know regarding this, uh, this sign and also this, uh, you know, supplementary panel that is attached to it that is causing confusion sometimes in quiz. So the answer to this number one question is very. So let's proceed to the number two, which says, Chiunque non abbia potuto evitare la caduta o lo spargimento di materie vascide, infiammabili o comunque pericolose, deve tra l'altro presignare la zona con i segnali mobili di pericolo anche in mezzo alla carreggiata. So, what is your answer to this question? Uh, we are going to be having some questions today with that, uh, with that science, which I believe, uh, you know, uh, 
I think we need it because I have discovered that so many questions people find difficult. And even sometimes when you go to write your exam, you see less uh, um, questions with root sign. But ma majority of these questions, they are always without sign, you understand? So that is why today we'll be dealing more on these uh, questions without uh, sign. So um, we have uh, Vera from um, Mr. Corey, and uh, we have uh, Vera from Mr. Friday, Vera from Sister Faith, we have Vera from uh, Sister Amaka, we have uh, Vera from Mr. Chigozi. Okay, that is what we have for now. So, okay, Mose Grande said number two, Vera, and uh, you know, uh, we have Mr. Daniel said Vera, Mr. Uh, Sister. Queen said number two, Vero. Sister Edith said number two, Vero. And also Sister Feather said number two, Vero. Mr. Joshua said number two, Vero. Okay, before we proceed, please, if you know you like this video, uh, just try to share it with your friends. Remember to hit the like button. And also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, don't forget to do that. And also, please, if you also want to support me, you can also super chat me, which I will appreciate a lot. So uh, we still have, uh, I think we have uh, Don Vico said pass so, but I don't know the number you are referring to. If you can be specific, that would be uh, nice. Okay, Mr. Uh, Richard said number two, Vero, and also Sister Tracy said number two, Vero. Mr. Joshua said number two, Vero, uh, and also, okay. Okay, Don Vico said number two, fast. Very good. What this question is saying, that is saying is that, okay, Star Tina said to Vero. What this question is saying is that, he said, Ki un kwe non abia potuto evitare la caduta o lo spargimento di materie viscide, infiammabile o comunque pericolose, deve tra l'altro presignalare in la zona con i segnali mobili di pericolo, anche in mezzo alla carriggiata. So, whosoever that is not able to avoid the falling out of, uh, you know, goods or loads, uh, or, you know, the, uh, this word spagimento means, for example, uh, you know, the spread out of, uh, you know, all those materials that come and you know that can easily spread out that can you know get lost all those uh, you know th those things and also um, the material vichy the infiammabile or comunque pericoloso so and all those uh, all those um, uh, you know flammable um, goods and also uh, whatsoever dangerous goods must try as in however to make sure uh, he or she signal those um, those uh, loads with um, you know uh, this uh, the danger triangle a triangular sign even in the middle of the carriageway. You see, for example, take note. One of the material uh, vichide, you know, the slippery, that vichide, I think, uh, vichide, yes. Those slippery um, uh, goods they are talking about, or materials, or substance, or whatsoever, the liquid they are talking about, this is one of them. For example, engine oil, uh, all those, you know, slippery, uh, you know, uh, um, liquid. If you are, if you find yourself in this kind of situation, at first you must try to make sure you quickly place the triangular uh, sign, the mobile triangular sign, which is the danger warning sign. You quickly place that sign, you know, uh, to you know inform other road users because it's this is danger. You understand? So you must inform this, you must signal this danger to them to let them understand that, yes, there is danger. And also you must try everything possible to make sure you clean it up. You can't leave it like that. You can't drive off because uh, maybe you have nothing to do. 
Somebody will want to ask, okay, if I'm not able to clean up, then should I remain there? No, you can't remain there. But what you do is to call the owner of the road. Is it that you call vigili or you call the police? You understand? So that they will, you know, find solution to the problem. For example, also in a situation like this, you understand? So you must make sure you try to, uh, you know, to signal it, uh, give a warning sign that we, you know, uh, you know, that we um, send information to other road users because the at the end of the day, what everybody is trying to do or what the owner of the road is trying to do is to make sure, you know, uh, a, a accident is less, you understand, to ensure the safety of every road users, you understand? So, and also in a situation like this, what do you have to do? Because it is clear that a, a heavy object like this, you cannot carry it alone. You inform the, the police, you call the, the vigil, you call whatsoever, the people that is responsible, let them understand what you're passing through, you know, all those kind of things, you understand? Or in a situation like this, Please, please, there is something I want us to, uh, to observe here. You see, whenever we are talking about things that you're supposed to keep inside your car, we talk about a reflective jacket, and we talk about uh, the triangular, uh, the tri triangular mobile de pericolo, which is the warning triangle sign, triangular sign. Like for example, the issue of um, of uh, like uh, the uh, reflective jacket, you see it here. You are not obliged to hold it because if you don't have it in your car, nobody is going to find you. Nobody is going to do you anything. But in a situation like this, you are obliged to wear it because what this person is doing is very bad. This is up to Strada. You understand? In the first case. This is Autostrada, and you, if you watch, you see we have Nadia, you understand? We have Nadia. So the visibility, now we are saying him because we are close to him. Believe me, somebody that is 150 meters, 200, 300, or 500 meters from him cannot see, see you know, um, see, uh, see it clearly that somebody is at the middle of the carriageway. And don't forget, this is Autostrada, where the maximum speed limit is 120, uh, sorry, 130 kilometers per hour. So just imagine how dangerous it is. And he's even have a putting his hands in his pocket. It's very bad. Never you engage yourself in this kind of uh, situation because uh, if somebody is coming and that person is not seeing you, oh, only God know what is going to happen. So even if at all you are to come out in this kind of situation, you are supposed to wear your reflective jacket to make to increase the visibility you understand to make it easy for other road users to you know be able to see you so something like this is very bad never you engage yourself in this kind of action because um, anything can happen you are in, you are at the middle of the carriageway you understand and that is why watch uh, even all the if you watch all the like for example you see them here even if you watch the, this police here Watch this police, you see that his jacket is having a reflective uh, bet that you can easily sight it from distance, you understand? With the reflection of light and all those things. So that is why they dress like that. They always have it. So you can't stand in the middle of the carriageway in this manner without a reflective jacket. It's very wrong, you understand? And also for the loads that, you know, dispersed, uh, you know, everywhere, you must try to make sure you call the owner of the road. Never you leave it like this. Call them, they know what to do. And also, uh, at first, you signal it with this uh, kind of, uh, this uh, triangular mo uh, uh, one, uh, mobile warning sign. And also, so that in case of maybe they are going to call somebody to wash the road or to clean it up, they will do that, you understand? Because you cannot leave that road uh, slippery with oil or you know uh, any of those uh, you know uh, material on top because it's going to be dangerous for every other road user. You understand? It's going to reduce the 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 uh, the adherence of uh, of your of other vehicles. You understand? So the answer is very. Anybody that is not able to avoid the falling out of uh, you know um, goods. 
or the you know um goods maybe others dangerous goods those are slippery goods uh flammable or or whichever goods must try in any way to make sure he or she signal those uh, that uh, part of carriage way with a triangular mobile uh, uh, sign in order to to make other road users understand that there is danger in that particular stretch of road so the answer is very kiunque non abbia potuto evitare la caduta o lo spargimento di materie viscide infiammabili o comunque pericolose deve tra l'altro pressionare la zona con i segnali mobili di pericolo anche in mezzo alla carreggiata the answer is vero so let's proceed to this number three, which says in autostrada, un autoveicolo può trainare un veicolo che non sia un rimorchio se questo non, non può più circolare con qualsiasi grave, eh, grave motivo. Uh, sorry, per qualsiasi grave motivo. So leave your answers below. If you think this number three is vero, please let us know if you think it's worse. So let us know. Like I said, please, if you also want to support me, you know, by super chatting me, you can do that. And also, please don't forget to make sure you like the video, share it with your friends. Uh, and also, I appreciate you for that. I have um, Mr. Chigosi, which said, Faso. Um, we have Lady JP said three vero. We have uh, Sister Petri said three vero, three faso. Mr. Maka C3 Vero, Mr. Richard C3 Faso, okay. We have Mr. Monday which said 3 Faso and also Mr. Camara said 3 Vero and Mr. Gospower said 3 Vero. Okay, one thing I want us to, you know, always Bear in mind is this, any question we answered here, do not allow that question to give you headache on your exam day. Always try to make sure you understand why it is vero and why it is fast. That is why I always go ahead or go that deep to try to make sure it's not that I like to waste time. The reason for that is because you need to understand why it is vero and why it is fast. So you understand? So that, uh, you know, understanding it that way will help you to, you know, uh, figure out the right answer on your exam day. So please, if you don't understand anything, do not hesitate to leave your question below at the comment section. So we have uh, Sister Glory, which said, uh, number three, first, so we have uh, Mr. Exodus, which said three vero, Mr. Okorie, which said three vero, Mr. Feather, which said three first, so Mr. God Gospel, which said three first, so and also Don Vicky, which said three first, so Mr. Joshua, which said three double first, so and also Mr. Daniel, which said three first, so Sister Queen, which said three vero. Sister Lovett, we say three faso, and also Mr. Muse, we say three faso. In autostrada, un autoveículo può trainare un veículo che non sia un rimorchio se questo non può più circolare per qualsiasi grave motivo, which is in autostrada. A vehicle can tow another vehicle that is, um, you know, um, that is faulty uh, due to the fact that this ve vehicle can no longer, you know, circulate or uh, is having faults. So you can tow it uh, even if this vehicle is not a, is not, um, a trailer, which is remarkable. Okay, we have uh, so many responses. Now, let us see. You see, in Autostrada, One thing I will also, uh, you know, advise us, those of us who have written our, who have passed our exam and also we are doing, um, uh, what is it called, pra uh, practical and also very soon we'll be, we'll be buying our car. Please, if you are doing your insurance, 
always remember to te tell them to add karatresi. This karatresi, what is it? Sometimes, uh, definitely you are going to pay some things, uh, you know, uh, more. They are going to, you are going to add something to it. Maybe where it's less, for example, where it's, where insurance is costing, uh, maybe your weight cost 10 euros before they will ask you to add one euro to it. I'm just making an example. I'm not telling you that insurance costs uh, 10 euros, you understand? So you are going to add something to it. Reason is because one day you'll be needing it. I tell you, there was a day I have to, to call, um, you know, this characteristic to tow my car from my house to um to where the mechanic is it, it should be let's say maximum 10 minutes drive these people took 100 euros from me but if you do your insurance and you add this but though why it happens like that was because they couldn't verify if i i, I if i added characteristic to it so they told me that I have to pay, but if they are able to verify that I added characteristic to it, the money will be refund, refunded to me, which they did. So um, um, why am I saying this? If you want to tow a car in Autostrada, you cannot, uh, you can't tie rope on a car and be dragging it in Autostrada. It is not acceptable. It is not allowed. So what you must do is to call Sokoso Stradale. You understand? Call Sokoso Stradale to, to, to do it. But in your case, if you have this characteristic inside your insurance, if you look the paper the insurance company gives to you, uh, the certificate of the, of the insurance, you are going to see the number, the assistance number, I think a uh, uh, numero de assistance or numero ved, something like that. You call that number. You tell them that this is, you give, what you are going to give them is your plate number, you understand? Maybe they will ask you one or two questions, your name, you know, this kind of thing. And the address where you are located, you know, at that uh, very moment. So before you know what, they know how to do it. The nearest by Sokoso Stradale will come to you and you know tow your car to anywhere you want them to tow it to. You are just going to give them the address, you understand? So you don't tie rope on a car and be dragging it in Autostrada. It is not allowed. So this is what I'm advising you. Please do not forget to do that. If you, if you are doing your insurance, yes, most time, because you, you just uh, bought a new car, you know, you want to do insurance, you know, maybe uh, at least my wallet is, you know, is, is not, is no longer heavy, you know, those, you try to consider, okay, let's, let's try to economize, let's, you know, do it like this. No, you are going to find it uh, difficult one day and you, you maybe, for example, take, let's assume that, in one year, let's just assume that you make insurance of one year, and in one year, maybe you happen to call Carotresi two times, and you are to pay maybe 100 euros, you know, there about in one of them. So two of them, you are going to pay 200 euros. And maybe when you when you were doing the insurance, and the, maybe you were supposed to just add 50 euros to it, or maybe uh, you know, 20 euros or 70 euros. So at the end of the day, you understand that is you know is uh, is helpful or is needed you understand so please that is uh, what I'm advising you are not obliged to do it take note that is just for me but for the, regarding the question it is fast so the answer is not uh, it's not uh, true because it is not allowed or you are not allowed to 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 tow a vehicle uh, you know um, in autostrada because the vehicle is no longer functioning or because the vehicle is faulty. No, you are not allowed to do that. There are special people that is dedicated for that. That is the Sokoso Stradale that you just seen. So uh, the answer is FASO. You are not allowed to tow vehicle in Autostrada. So let's move to number four, which says, Durante la marcha sulla uh, autostrada, eh, strada estrabana principale, l'uso dei protori anabalianti è facoltativo in condizioni di Perfecta visibilidad. So let's see what your question 
your, your answers are regarding this question number four. So please just try to be specific. Number four, uh, if you are responding to number four, let us know you are responding to number four. How many like are we having? If you if you have not liked this video, please just do so. Otherwise, just bear it in mind that you are not encouraging me. But for you to encourage me, just try to do that. I appreciate you for that. Okay, Mr. Chico uh, said number one first. Sorry, number four first. So Sister Maka said number four first. So. Mr. Friday said number four first, so why Mr. Vicky Great said number four, Vero. Uh, Vicky Great is like you're just coming. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Victor said number four, Vero. Mr. Kamara said number four first, so Sister Faith said number four first, so Sister Lady JP number six, said number four, Vero. Mr. Gospower said number four first, so Mr. Richard said number four first, so Sister Edith said number four first, so uh, Mr. Sorry, Sister Tina said number four first, so Sister Lovett said number four first, so Sister Feather said number four first, so Sister Lovett said number four first, so okay, Mr. Wheezy, uh, Wiz B said number, I, I think you are referring to number four, very good, first. So. Okay, Mr. Daniel said Faso. And Mr. Esuda said Faso. And Don Vicky said Faso. We have so many Faso. As usual, I won't tell you if it is Vero or is Faso, but we are going to see it uh, why, you know, why the answer is what it is. So, for example, in Autostrada or in the highway road, this is what they are referring to. That uh, it said is, let's look into the question before we, we, we go back to Autostrada. See, during the march, Autostrada, Estrada Estrabana Principale, l'uso de pretori anabaglianti e facoltativo in condizioni di perfetta visibilità. That is to say, when you are transiting in autostrada, that the use of uh, this uh, low beam light is optional. Because the word uh, facultativo means optional, you understand? In a perfect uh, visibility condition, that is to say, because you can see clearly, so you can decide to own your low beam light and you can decide not to own your low beam light. So it is something of your own choice. No, it is not true. In Autostrada, you are obliged to own your low beam light. If we look at this image here, uh, you see this, this car here, is not having his uh, low beam lights on, which is very bad. That is why sometimes when you are driving, you see uh, you know, the police will just bring out the, uh, the button and stop one part particular car, you'll be wondering what all these are little mistakes, you understand, even it happens inside the city, you understand, maybe because of the speed, the kind, because of the kind of maneuver the person did, maybe in a very far place that he never knew that somebody is watching, so just like that, so if you watch this one, and this one is having its own, uh, own uh, let's do it like this, You can see this one is having its, oh. So this one is having its low beam light on, which is good. This one, I can't, yes, this one is having it here. Yes, this one is having it. This one is having it. Even this one is having it. You understand, you can see it. Eh? You must own your low beam light, you understand? It is obligation, it is something that you must do. This one, I can't see it. Uh, this one, yes. So it is something that you must do. Why do we, why do, do we have to own it, you understand? It helps to increase visibility, you understand? It might 
sound somehow to you how you know at least i can see the car no it is not always like that you understand because uh, uh you know you don't forget that you are moving in a very high speed even like this type of autostrada a1 that is having at least uh, i think uh, three lanes uh is is the maximum speed limit here can be increased to 150 kilometers per hour so you can imagine the kind of uh, you know uh, speed you are traveling on so that is why it is very good for you to uh to have a, a you know clear visibility as in let there be that thing that will easily call your attention over another vehicle you understand so that is why the low beam light is one of them so it is not something optional it is something that you must do yeah, it's, it's obligatory and not obligatory, not uh, not uh, facultative you understand so the answer is fast so durante la marcha sulla autostrada Estrada Estrabano Principale, l'uso del proiettore anabaglianti non è facoltativo, è obbligatorio, you understand? So, in condizioni di perfetta visibilità, so that is where the answer is fast, so because they use the word here, facoltativo, which means optional or something of your choice, you understand? No, it's not true. The answer is fast. So, um, please don't forget, like I said, if you have question uh any number is not clear to you you can do that but uh, apart from you know we're on youtube and uh, you can later go and watch it but if you are having any number any question you you feel maybe it's not clear you know you can still uh, ask your question uh, we are here to to answer it together so that is it number five said sulle carreggiate sulle rampe e sulle svincoli dell'autostrada è vietato sostare o fermarsi in caso di malessere dei passeggeri. So, what is your answer to this question, or what are your answers to this question number five? Okay, we're having Mr. William, which says number, okay, that is number four, Mr. William is responding to, I think your response just come now, so, um, So we have um, more than 11 people watching and we're having 11 people who like the video. So, wow, I think you can clap for yourself for that. I appreciate you. Uh, Mr. Monday said number five, also Sister Lovett said number five, also. Mr. Friday said number five, Faso. Sister, Mr. Kisley said Faso. Sister Amaka said Faso. Uh, Mr. Kamarus, Kamara said Faso. Sachigoze said Faso. Mr. Faith said Faso. Mr. Vicky Great said Faso. Uh, Mr. Joshua said Faso. Okay, everybody is saying Faso. Okay. Lady JP said Faso. Mr. Daniel said Faso. Mr. Victor said Faso. And then uh, Sister Tina said Faso. Sulle autostrade, or oh, sorry, sulle carreggiate, sulle rampe e sugli svincoli delle autostrade è vietato sostare o fermarsi in caso di malessere dei passeggeri. In the first case, I want us to look into what is called uh, ramp. Rampe autostradale uh, or, or ramp, uh, the highway ramp is what we are having here, you understand? From here to here is called ramp. These are ramp, you understand? So then we'll look into, we we'll go into this uh, zvincoli. These are what is called zvincoli. They help you to channel your direction in autostrada. Remember, autostrada we don't have a we don't have junction. You understand? So what we have is zvincoli. You understand? That enables you to you know to go to diverse direction. For example, you see if you are going to Como Kiaso, you you take the the right at the fork. If you are going to Milano, you take the left at the fork. So. Uh, that is 
Zvinkulu or Zvinkuli. These are Zvinkuli, you know, that you're having here. One, the carriageway is what we are having here from year to year. This is carriageway. Like, for example, here we're having to work carriage in this uh, type of autostrada, you understand? So, in all these places, stopping and parking is prohibited. But in the, in the case of maybe uh, 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 you are having a passenger that is sick. No, in that case, is you are in emergency. It is no longer prohibited for you to stop. I'm not saying parking for you to stop. You can stop, uh, you know, at least uh, for uh, not more than three hours, you understand? Uh, to enable you give, uh, you know, uh, do the necessary thing that you're supposed to do for that pass passenger. If you, are the, if you are to call the, um, what is it called, the, um, the healthcare people, you call them so that they will come with their ambulance and take care of the, of the, of the passenger that is sick, you understand? So uh, stopping in this uh, Zwinkoli, uh, Rampe, and also Karijata in Autostrada, it is not prohibited in the case of a passenger that is sick, you understand? Because once passenger is sick, it's considered as a kind of emergency, you understand? So even the driver as well, you understand? So in that case, you can stop to quickly, you know, give, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, attention to the, uh, to the person that is sick. So in that case, it is and it's not uh, prohibited, you understand? But normally or generally it's prohibited to stop in those places, you understand? So the answer is FASO. Number six says, per diminuire l'inquinamento dell'aria provocato de veicoli, bisogna accelerare repetutamente da fermo per tenere caldo i motori e migliorarne i rendimento. So this number six, what is your response to these numbers? What are your response to this number six, uh, which says to um, to reduce the uh, the air pollution, uh, you know, produced by vehicle, that you need to con to repeatedly, uh, you know, um, press your your accelerator, uh, you know, um, even when the vehicle is stopped. You understand? in order to you know to to maintain the good functioning of uh, of the of the engine what is your your understanding of this question we are having um number 6 right okay mr tinosa said number 6 faso and also sister lady jp said faso Sister Maka said Faso, Mr. Kingsley said Faso, Sister Edith said Faso, Mr. Monde said Faso, Sister Vicky Great said Faso, Sister Glory said Faso, Mr. Kamara said Faso, and uh, Mr. Gaspar said Faso, Sister Lovett said Faso, Mr. Victor said, uh, I think you're okay, maybe you're just trying to do some correction there. Mr. Gospower said Faso, Sister, Mr. Chico said Faso, and uh, Sister Tina said Faso, Mr. Richard said Faso, Mr. S. Soda said Faso, Mr. Vicky Gray, uh, Mr. Festo said Faso, and Don Vico said six vero. Wow. <laughs> you see, um, actually, don't forget that these people, uh, they don't play with air, anything pollution, both air pollution, noise pollution, and whatsoever environmental pollution. They don't play with them. So anything, always observe something, anything that can increase in the, the, the pollution of all these things or in, in worsen them, it is not always allowed, you understand? Uh, because here, you see sometimes in some places, you see some people when they stop at the traffic light, you, see, you hear them, broom, 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 broom. It is not done here. It is not allowed, you understand? When you are stopped uh, by the traffic light, you don't have to be steaming your, your, uh, your, your, you don't have to be raising your engine to, you know, to increase the functioning 
Okay, increase the functioning of the auto, you know, uh, yes, the functioning of the engine. No, that is not correct. You understand? Uh, you must leave your, in, your engine will be steaming. Even the, the modern car, the cars now, when you stop at the traffic light, the engine will off. So when you want to pick again, it's just for you to, you know, to press the throttle and the engine will start again. You understand? So for you to be there and you know be raising your engine vroom, 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 is not done here. You understand? So the answer is fast, so it is not allowed. Good afternoon, sister. Uh, sorry, yes, yeah, sister Jane. Uh, okay, you said you are new here, you are welcome. Uh, so um you're welcome, you're welcome to the group, you know. Um, the answer to this number six is FASO. It is not done that way. You don't have to be, uh, you know, making broom, 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 you know, raising your engine when you are stopped at the, at the traffic light or, you know, whatsoever. So that is not correct. Uh, if your in, if your the car of your the engine of your car is having a you know a steaming problem, take it to the mechanic. They will put it in order and make sure you don't have to raise your engine to maintain the the, the steaming of your engine. So the answer is fast. Okay, thank you for that. Um, number six we said is fast. So number seven said. Se si acquista una batteria per auto, si può consegnare quella esausta, which is usata, in bracket, al rivenditore che provvederà, iriti, eh, provvederà a ritirarla senza ulteriori costo, eh, costi aggiuntivi. So, um, this question number seven is saying that if you buy a, a motor battery that you can, you know, um, give out the old one to the, the seller, which is, uh, you know, which the seller is supposed to take that uh, old one from you without additional cost. Okay, so number seven, we're having Sachiko Zewood said Vero, we're having Amaka said Vero, we're having Mr. Kinsley said Vero, Sister Edith said Vero, Mr. Friday said Vero, Sister Feder said Vero, Mr. Monday said Vero, Sister Lovett said Vero, Mr. Sister Mavi said, uh, Vero, also Mr. Richard, Richard said Vero, Lady JP said Faso, Mr. Uh, Sister Tina said Vero, Mr. Prince said Vero, and also Mr. Desmo said Faso. Mr. Don Vico said Vero, Mr. Gus Power said Vero. So if you buy your battery from the, uh, from the seller, are you supposed to give the old one to them? Yes or no? The answer is yes. You can give the old one to them without them asking you of any additional cost. You understand? So the answer is zero. If you take note, you are not so. You can't throw a motor battery, uh, you know, at the roadside. You can't throw it off like that. You understand? Because there are some, you know, a, a, a dangerous a, a chemicals inside that can, you know, um, pollute the environment, you understand? So that is why when you buy a, a change the battery of your, of your vehicle, you're supposed um, to give the old, the old one to the seller, you understand, without additional cost. So the answer is very. Let's look, no, to no, look at number eight question, which I think, or uh, which is our last question of today uh, before we call it, Ciao. Which says, say, at un incrocio giungono contemporaneamente da strada diversa due veicoli. Entrambi hanno l'obbligo di moderare la velocità per evitare incidente. I know, I know um, every one of us, we are supposed to get this one correct, but uh, let's see 
What is your take on this? Thank you, Miss, uh, Mr. Anthony, for that, uh, for letting us know that, you know, hitting the like button is also appreciating. Uh, but it's just that, as usual, some people don't, they better don't hit the like button. That is just the truth. Uh, you know, thank you for that anyway. Uh, we're having very, 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 I'm still waiting for Vero, 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 so many Vero. So this is the last question for today. So, uh, okay, we are still having Vero, we are still having Vero, we are still having Vero, we are still having Vero. So what the answer is Vero, because when two vehicles are about to engage or when you Let's leave another vehicle aside. When you are approaching any junction, any intersection, what is it? It's a danger, you understand? So it is always advisable or you are obliged to, to moderate, your, to reduce your speed. You can't, you know, approach intersection in a high speed because of maybe the, whether the traffic light is green or the traffic agents give you a go ahead or the road sign give you a go ahead. You are supposed to reduce or moderate your velocity. On take note, they said um, per evitare incidente. So remember, thank you, um, Clara Fede, for, for that super chatting. I appreciate you for that. Um, remember, you know, um, anything that's you know, requires you or that helps you to avoid accident is always uh, is allowed. It's always for the for the betterment of the road. It's always for the safety of the road. It's always for the safety of the of the road user. So the answer to this number eight is Vero. So I want to appreciate every one of you. Thank you for being here. Uh, you know, it was uh, it, it was, uh, you know, uh, a wonderful moment that we had together. I want to say thank you. Goodbye. See you next Saturday if nothing changes. But if there is, I will still try to make sure and let us know. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.